Hey guys, welcome to episode 71 of Far Play Anime Cast. This is uh, June 1st, 2017, right on time. And this is the start of t- summer 2017 season. We are about to have fireworks over here, over in the great US of A. And of course, I think, you know, just today, I think the episodes came out. I mean, the first episodes came out essentially July 1st, um, our time, which is July or July 2nd on Japan time. So we were just like pretty much watching it the hours before this episode. But some of the more interesting shows did come out early on, so we'll have a lot to talk about. And with me are the usual suspects, Toast here. This layout is a, is a nightmare. Let's uh, <laughs> let's not talk about this too Whose much. fault is that? <laughs> let's Dark, not talk about I, I would have liked cool. several hours before. <sighs> Alright, we'll talk about this later. Uh, Dark. <laughs> hey! I also gave Toast that 45 minutes ago, but all right. (laughs) And then we have somebody who unfortunately couldn't be with us during the summer previews uh, episode, but we would like to. Uh, Back with technical problems fixed is Nier. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? What's up? What's an alpha channel? (laughs) <laughs> all right let's let's not uh, let's not do that too much um so again we've been watching a couple of series alpha channel is a channel <laughs> some of the i guess more interesting ones that we think will come out haven't yet or i guess okay let me not say interesting but uh the big name ones haven't come out yet but again the ones we are watching are pretty interesting in and of themselves uh so what have you been up to toast huh what have you been up to the oh, past two I've been playing Ragnarok Online the past uh, couple of days. <laughs> right, okay. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Did your wife, Lin Lin, leave you? Or it was a. Uh, I don't I'm, know how the commercial went. I'm playing the uh, pre renewal version, which is basically, I think, before 2014, 7, around those. Super old and like 250 million EXP to get to level 98 to 99, and that'll take me a month. So yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah. So uh, what have you been watching? I guess anime wise. Oh, <laughs> right. Or oh. reading manga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this is that sort of podcast, right? Yeah. Okay. I've been watching something called uh, Katsugeki Token Rambu. It's it's all right. Okay. If that's it's uh, the Shaft one made by the God Eater team, right? No, it's the UFO table made by the God Eater no, sorry, team. Sorry, UFO table. Why did I say sh- Oh my god. <laughs> sorry, this like past couple... This You're past, thinking like, about the other uh, the other Fate series that will be made by UFO yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, will it though? <laughs> or will it only ever get pushed back? Yeah. Well, people people are all keep getting uh, hyped about it, but we, uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, so that's good. Yeah. Now that we'll move on to Dark. Oh, you don't want me to talk about it? All right. We can, we can talk Not about yet. we can talk about more about uh what you watched uh, in a bit. But uh, Dark, what have you been up to these past two weeks? What the hell are you uh, doing in this overlay? I, who knows anymore? Now our names aren't there. Oh God, no one's here. Um, <laughs> what did Podcast I watch? That's a good. Cancel. <laughs> <laughs> Hosts are done. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of what I watched. I know from the new season I watched Hinalagi and Casino School. I forget what the actual name is every single time I read it. But that's okay because I won't be watching that anymore. Um, oh my god! What I is it called? Hate Kaki- you so much, Toes. Kakiguri. Kakiguri. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Very good. Anyway, but uh, other than that, I watched. Um, I'm still keeping up with Simfo Gear to gear up for the one this season. Yes, yes, yes. Has the first the first episode of Simfo Gear AX or whatever for the fourth season it is that they're calling hasn't been released yet, right? It's supposed to have gotten. Re- I think I think it came out in Japan. I don't think it ever came out in. Um, I don't think it got subbed yet. Uh, okay. And, uh, posted anywhere. So, okay. So oh, that's well. you've been you've been through most of like the beginning shows. I mean, it, it's only been like the first days. So yeah, yeah. And, more shows to come in like you know a week is during this week essentially is when a lot of them seem to be starting up, and hopefully we'll get sub. Yeah. Okay. So what about you, Nier? Hi. Uh, 
I haven't I haven't been watching too much because uh, uh, my computer died. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his for, computer died is why he actually missed our preview episode here. Yeah, my computer was completely fried for almost two weeks. Um, so I didn't get to watch very much. Uh, but while it was fried, I watched uh, a lot of Roroni Kenshin. Um, What's Roroni Kenshin Gant- here? Shut up. The Gantz movie. <laughs> And uh, it's pretty good. Um, very, very nice CGI. Uh, the way CGI movies should be done, but it's too expensive, so they don't do that. But um, I also watched the first or the one-th episode of uh, Kage Gurui. <laughs> um, Kage Gurui, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, which is the... Uh, Funny Faces, the anime. Uh, Shippugeki no Soma plus Prison School, sort of. Although, okay, this is, I mean, we'll go more into this, but I actually don't like bringing up Prison School, although it is, I use it as a tool to create an easier imagery in our mind. I mean, I was going to compare sense? it to Prison School as well, because it's got a similar... Uh, Grotesque nature. Yeah, it's got a similar <laughs> setup, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, With the I, whole I, private school and... There's some fucking I just, I just secret like, bullshit that goes on. It's yeah, I, I just don't like. Well, yeah, the the premises are pretty similar, but in terms of like the the themes and like kind of what it presents in terms of like humor and stuff like that, I don't actually like comparing it too much to Prison School because that puts Prison School up on like this sort of pedestal, which I don't ever want to do <laughs> in the first place. So. Hey, man! <laughs> it won an award. It is award winning. It deserves its. It's pedestal. already on a pedestal, man. Okay, so. So again, you know, beginning of a season. Uh, hopefully, you'll find something that you'll get into a bit more though afterwards. <laughs> Although you could get into Kakegurui, who knows? Uh-huh. I, don't I, don't, that. I don't think so. But um, I don't know. The season looks kind of lame to me. But whatever. Okay. So uh, as for me, again, I've been kind of you know been on my usual web uh, web novel slash light novel slog until. I mean, the thing is, I keep saying I want to go back to manga stuff, but it's such a daunting task these days because, you know, obviously... How is it daunting? Do... Manga's like three minutes a chapter. Do you, do you read slow? No, no, no. It's not, it's not... I mean, it's not just manga in isolation, right? If it was just manga, like, I'd be all over that shit, but it's not... Like, I also want to read when I was letting all stuff. I have the anime watch. I have other stuff to do, you know, in my life. And so on yeah. and so forth. So it's I, not I know a, what you mean. You want to yeah, like yeah. turn your brain off and just watch some anime, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Be not literate. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, the the thing is, uh, and when I read manga, I don't like. I legit like start scraping like aggregation sites to find like everything that I could possibly read. So it's like an all or nothing situation. But anyways, um, I've been keeping up with my usual stuff. I I saw. So Kakigurui, I saw, I will have a lot to talk about that, I saw Hinologi. I really, really, uh, bonus episode of Demi-chan came out, episode 13, uh, which Dark also watched. I do, do also want to watch it real quick. I finished up some of this, uh, the series from last season, uh, with especially to note Tsuki ga Kirei. Um, no spoilers, but I, um, what I'll say about the ending is that it was relatively predictable, like 80, 80, 85 percent chance, maybe 90 percent chance of it happening. But um, I'm not. I mean, it fit the theme, but I'm not sure how much I really like it. I mean, like it. It seems kind of cynical if I say that, but I'm not sure how much I liked it. But it does fit the theme of the whole, whole story. So, uh, c- uh, congrats to Skiga Kire for kind of developing a solid uh, package all the way through. Uh, you know... Did you like or hate the ending? Um, I like the ending. I think more maybe could have been done, but it was solid enough as it is, again, with what it promised to deliver. So I can't fault it too much for it, but yeah. But uh, that's neither here nor there. And I'll probably be talking about, you know, stuff a bit more or the recent series a bit more. Maybe, you know, do a throwback to last season. And I'm also trying to read, you know, 
improve my Japanese, get into reading visual novels, maybe here and there a little bit, uh, a bit more. And uh, a lot of stuff is coming out this summer, like translated wise, because you know summer is when people have time to translate, you know, fan communities. And people, a lot of people aim for summer stuff because of summer sales, or you know, a lot of people will be on the interwebs trying to search for games to play or whatever. So, uh, one that recently released was Libra Vampire Princess or something like that. And I actually have it. Uh, it's available on Steam, and you can also get like the uncensored patch for it. Uh, I believe they're also doing like a sweepstakes for the Takimaka or whatever, which is not either here nor there. Nice. But, yeah, uh, apparently you get like a free Takimaka, which is like 120 bucks or something uh, valued. Wow, um, for a pillow cover? Is yeah, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, you know the, you know how it's like really expensive. They're like those sorts of stuff. But, anyways, I'll be thinking of maybe trying to do that. I also have another visual novel that's like free to play, but it's like really like it's one of those visual novels. Is, is like, it, the, is it Ghost Town Gun Sweeper? I got that for fifteen dollars. No, it's, like, it's, like, it's like that. Uh, no, it's like those C tier visual Python Western visual novels, like one manga day. And uh, Nier and I are probably going to check it out soon, so watch out for that. Is it like Adam Girl? <laughs> no, Adam Girls was de- somewhat decently made, so... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> this thing this. is worse? <laughs> Compared to this. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so Nier and I will probably be going through that sometime soon, so look out for that. Uh... Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you just got pulled into it. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Uh, so, anyways, we'll move on to what Toast has to say again. Oh. Um, Toast, you, could, uh, you and I both uh, were—I mean, we were okay with watching some of, like the, the Chinese shows and stuff like that. So, um, so and some of them have you know popped up early in the season thus far. So, what have you been up to, or what series do you want to talk about to start off discussions? I mean, I don't know about you, but I think Token Rambo is, is pretty Japanese. Okay. Do you like, want to talk about Token Rob with it? Yeah. I mean, okay. Why yeah, not? go for it. Yeah, okay. So you want to talk about Token Rob with it? Okay, so again, this is the Ufa Table Ufa Table uh series. And it is, or it is one of the Ufa Table series, if I remember correctly. I think there was another one. I'm not sure. Um but this one is directed by directed slash like, you know, script produced, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Put up by the people who worked on God Eater and also Tales of Exilia, X, Tales of X, the animation. Is this like Asteria? This is Asteria, the animation. Excuse me. Asteria, the animation. So, yeah, the art world looks very similar to like the Tales stuff. But, um, I mean, that's what I so- thought so too when I uh, started it up. I thought, hey, this looks just like the, uh, the Tales team. And I was right. Okay, so... Oh, you want me to talk about the show now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, do you guys know anything about the basis of Token Rambo? Yeah, no? it's essentially, like... I mean, like, the easiest way to put it so that most people there would understand it's, like, the mobile game, like, Kankore, like, collecting girls, except instead of girls, you're or collecting ship girls. You're collecting uh, sword boys, right, in a sense? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That, uh, it's... It's basically a Konkoi clone, but there's a few key differences. One of the differences is that uh, it's not Your this. Boys. Yeah, there's also it's not this parallel world where girls are actually ship girls, but they retain memories of their previous lives, which no one remembers. Mm-hmm. You're actually a time traveler, in from the year twenty twenty five, and you're this great sage guy named Saniwa, and your wait, job. Wait, so is this? Wait, wait, wait can I, sorry. Let me but so is token romb isn't actually set in the future or it's like set in the fantasy thing but it's like presumably not in the future right no it's in the f- it's, it's you, it, it you is yourself in the you, you you yourself are in the year 2025 and you send your sword boys back in time to to stop these time is that the premise of the original like mobile game yeah yeah oh uh, okay okay it I, is. Thought, I, th- I thought because because i only heard about like the sword boys part i thought it was only like because cause it's like even in like the uh, the Hanamaru one, like the one where you know they're they're doing like much more slice of life stuff. They start out, they don't really start out in the future, right? Like they already start out in like time, like when they're already sent back and like trying to defend against stuff, right? Yeah. So I've always thought that that was like the original back. 
No. Yeah, you you send your your sword lads uh, through magic space time portal and you fight like time retrograde on ti yeah time demons that want to mess up history it's, it's whatever but... yeah very much that's that's like the whole basic story you mean i'm not, uh just ancient japanese history is not my forte so i can't exactly explain the warring eras or the warring states or whatever but that's not the important part the important part is how it looks right and and if the characters are memorable and it's UFO table, it's the Steri team, it definitely looks cool, good. Fight scenes, I have no problem with. Story, eh. I have... how, how much CG is there? Because the Steri had a lot of CG oh, and it looked really ugly because of it. The, the skeleton bone boys, they're all CG. The, <sighs> the, the zombie samurai are not CG. The, uh, the major, you know, the major stuff that is UFO table, the back, the good background and stuff, that's CG. But I'd like to talk about the main difference, and from this and Konkole. the main difference is your character shows up actually and has a speaking role. Whoa, dude! Whoa, does this one have like an actual focus on what it's doing? Yes. This uh, Hanamaru is the slice of life. This is the more serious one. I mean, I think that's a better, like, at least these, like, questions stuff. I don't think we do, and uh, like, how Conklin tried to do it. Yeah, my opinion. I only you know understood I mean? half of you. Yeah, you're yeah, breaking you turn out. into Optimus Prime there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I mean, this episode starts off, they're doing things. And at the big climax, your character shows up, the Great Sage. He goes back in time and he's all like, let me handle this. And he summons even more sword boys to assist our two main characters. So, what? Does it, <clears throat> does it do the slice of life thing where like, no. it has, uh, let me finish. It has like the two, or like the, the main cast or whatever, and then everybody else is like super minor characters, or is it just like, Doing everybody. From what I saw, there's a main cast of six. That's the one that appears in like the the opening, and right. what are listed. So it might just be those. So far, mm, I'm not <sighs> sure because the you start up you start off with two sword boys, and then at the end of the episode when they're outnumbered, your character comes in and he summons four more sword boys to help you out. the gotcha. Yeah, pretty much. But I assume these like six main sword boys will be the main ones for now. That they've they're the only ones that appeared in the opening. Okay. So wait, can you guys you guys can hear me now, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So I think I like the whole like protagonist slash like the main player of the game being there. Uh, because uh... he he actually has a voice and. He will actually I mean, drive more the plot than, I mean, along. Yeah, 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 yeah. The point is, he interacts with the thing. He inter. I don't. I don't want to say things, but the boys in a game where the people spire. Yeah, uh, they're real. Where it's like you're also like as the player, like when you play the game, you're also interacting with them, right? You're not just like oh, just you know collecting them for badges. A lot of people play them because they're like characters in the game that like talk. Talk, talk back to you or whatever, right? Yeah, sure. So, I I think I really enjoy that part being reflected in uh, in something like this in Token Rambu, Katsuki Token Rambu, rather than uh, Kankale, where it's like, or the animation where it's like, it doesn't show that sort of interactive aspect that people like. I mean, I mean the are, whole are we gonna for, bring like, this up again because what they did right was they had a slice of life. Like side story, Hanamaru, and now they're doing this serious stuff, Katsugeki, which, which you know is one of the main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're covering. They're covering both bases. Token Rob was covering both bases, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, with the act, like action wise, like action CG wise, like what do you guys, what do you think of it? I. It's UFO table grade. That's for sure. I don't. It looks nice. 
Is it what? UFO table fate grade though? Sure. I mean, if you say so. Tails, tails? I, I think Toast is about to say define you for yeah, like Tails, Tails look good. Just, just looks good. CG wise, Tokarambu looks good. Fate looks good. God Eater. If we're talking about like God Eater, no, it looks better than God Eater. See, I don't think Zisteria look good though. Uh, like you want to elaborate the, the a little anime. bit? The anime, yeah. I don't think it looked that good. Like the, even the even the hand drawn shit. Outside of like the first episode, that shit did not look good. Like it didn't look good in motion. Took a screenshot of it, maybe, but like when when the characters were moving around and shit, it just it didn't look right, you know. So that's why I'm asking: Is this UFO table uh, tails or UFO table fate? Because uh, there is I'd a big fate. difference. Or I'd say tails. So far. Right. The faces are definitely from the ta like the tails team. All right, so overall, I guess overall, it's so far it has a good premise because it knows exactly what it's supposed to do right off the bat. Small cast, your main character appears to in order to interact with this small small cast. It has a focus. It's going to and it's going well so far. One thing though, I will never remember the names of all of these sword boys except Tombo Kiri. Yeah, I, I have mean, a history with Tombo Kiri. Tombo Kiri, I only remember because of Kyokai Senjo, where it's like one of the major like weapons in it was called Tombo Kiri, like Dragonfly's Cutter, I think it's called, yeah. right? Um, but like the other ones, like stuff like Muramasa, it's like you see that all the time. <laughs> anime, like yeah. all the time. So beyond that, it's a little bit hard. Like <laughs> there, there, there is one that's like. The, Done by like the like the Susano like you know like the sword wielded by Susano or whatever like stuff like that but it's like beyond you know, that it's very very hard. <laughs> and I mean, there's one like, named Mutsuno Kami, but this Mutsuno Kami uses a gun, and I'm like, why does this sword boy use a gun? Yeah, that's 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 also what kind of confusing. Why are they why are they using guns? Because <laughs> it's like, what was that Yakuza called? And they were samurais, and it's like uh... the age of guns is upon us. <laughs> the, the, the samurai, the samurai dying out. Date so masure. the samurai, samurai gotta use guns to stay around. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they, they gotta adapt. <laughs> they gotta that was carry out the last sword. samurai with Tom yeah. Cruise. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I, mean, I mean that's the weird stuff. One but of I them mean... is named Kunihiro, and then like later on in the episode, your main character, the sage guy, he summons another Kunihiro. But it's like this Kuni hero looks almost just like the main character Kuni hero, who's basically Fubuki, but he's got short shorts on. Nice. Uh, I, okay, like I said, so... yeah, that's just a personal problem. I can re I can memorize all the Kankoi names, like, yeah, usually because yeah, yeah, yeah. they have they have different hairstyles and hair colors. But I'm probably gonna have trouble with this. Yeah. Okay. So overall, again, I just said it's, uh, it's a good. Pretty it's a good premise. I don't know why people are comparing it to like to fate. Probably it's because it's UFO table. Because it's UFO table. Anything UFO table ever yeah, does for the rest of time bad. will be compared yeah. to fate. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it's the, very unfortunate. But but but, but the uh, the additional problem is the type of fans that UFO table and fate people attract. Kind of like like whenever somebody sees like UFO table. Like they kind of came here for the fate kind of thing, right? Yeah. So it's like they're already like when they see like any other title, they're already grand happy to order. Them. You're going back yeah, in time exactly, with exactly. servants. They're already like disappointed when they see something else that's not fate. You know what I mean? So it's it's a hard thing to sell uh, for you for people in a sense, and um, yeah. They're but all okay. savers. Yeah, they're all. They're actually well, I think all this guy uses. So that's a gun. also apocrypha, right? Apocrypha also has like all savers. <laughs> Uh, but Tombo Kiri is a spearman. He's a lancer. Okay. Then he's not a sword boy. <laughs> but he's yeah. A stick uh, boy. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Again, thanks for uh, covering uh, Tokyo Rumble. I'm actually planning on seeing the first episode uh, a bit after this, but yeah. It has a good. It, it's shaping up to be better than Con Cole, so. You can yeah, only well, can only go up not, from here. It's not a it's high hard. bar. <laughs> only go up. Got him. It's better than Kakule. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. 
Um, I want to cover uh, Hinology next. And uh, this is the full name of it is Hinology, like in logic. Uh, so this is, I, I forget what studio is made by, I'll find it in a bit, but it's, um, but it is essentially a magical girl show, as people might have kind of guessed from you know the trailers, from the girls just kind of jumping around, having random powers and shit like that. Um, is it sort of pure ma male fan service, like how sort of Vivid Red was, how Strike Witches was? No, but it is not. It's not like one of those like pre pada kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like where it's actually just like girl kids shows for like those who are like you know kindergarten elementary school it's like a little it's like shonen slash like you know not saying them i guess shonen ish uh but it is you know Wait a minute, what, girl show was this a show what? about the girl eating that sandwich uh the hot dog thing yeah hot dog, yeah, was, hot dog yeah, yeah, sandwich yeah, yeah. yeah that's all yeah. it's about yeah it's <laughs> there there is what to talk about there's one funny uh, part in the epi in the first episode where like the main one, the main girl like eats the hot dog, but she eats it in like a really weird way. Like she eats everything but the tip, and then like she like wiggles around the tip or something like that in a really weird manner, and then she sucks it in. It's I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's not even. It's not even like I don't know. Like Maybe it's I not even. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like like okay, I I was like that's like obviously sexually like they made it to be sexually suggestive. But it's not like it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> it's just no, 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 no. silly. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But, but even more than that, it just like doesn't really make sense if you think about it for more than like half a second. Like it doesn't actually well, make sense, right? <laughs> like, she, she's, it's not like she's just eating a fucking hot. She's eating like a full hot dog on the bun with relit. Like, no, no, no. But yeah, but but it's not like she's like you know like slowly like you know getting it. It's like she eats all of it and then she just leaves out the tip and then she just like wiggles around. Like what the fuck? Like, you're like, wow, this hot dog clearly suggests something sexually suggestive. Wait, what is she doing? <laughs> you're like, what is she doing? <laughs> so, oh, this is the Doga Kobo series. Oh, no. Oh, this explains a lot. Um, so, the artwork looks pretty similar to one or two other things. It's not Hime Goto, but um, uh, I remember it from one series. Maybe it's a Dojin that I'm remembering it, but. <laughs> The art. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is. Uh, it, it does have pretty good audio visuals. Um, uh, the transformation scene is. I, I believe it is done most, pretty much all in uh, 2D with a little bit of help from uh, CGI stuff like that. But um, there's like no like random like 3D shit flying around all the time, which is really nice. Um, transfer again. Transformation scenes themselves are pretty good, and that's sort of like the major part of this these sorts of series these days, right? Where it's like they're trying to sell the girls, kind of like jumping on each other and glomping each other, and then when the big bad whatever thing tangles up the other nakama, their tomodachi, uh, they transform, right? And then these transformation scenes make money because merchandise, right? So in that sense, they're, it's pretty good. The girls uh, are very... They're not flat, but it's very, like... Well, they are. They're... But not in the way that you're thinking. It's... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're... How do I say it? It's, they have a personality, and it seems like they could vary from it. Like, they could do other stuff. But they push the their sort of shtick so hard that it's like obnoxious at some point like the girl the main girl who is like essentially an airhead to, to some extent right uh to a large extent it, you know says other stuff you know she trances with the other girl she has her flashbacks trancing is like how they gain the magical powers they like they like contact somebody from across the astral plane or whatever fucking universe and then they gain their powers um, but, Can't do it after thirty, though. Yeah, <laughs> um, but they, you know, the the girl like talks about uh, some other stuff sometimes. But the times where she is an airhead, she is so much of this like bimbo airhead thing that you're just like, can we like not do this? Like, can we not 
do this? Like, it's okay if you just say, like, she just is like, uh, oh, or whatever. But don't be like, yeah, I'm just I'm fucking, like, sinking on the ground. Or, like, yeah, I'm going to be the best ever. And then it, like, freezes there for, like, five seconds. Like, no, I, I don't need to have this stuff, right? Um, and then the Ojo Sama acts like the Super Ojo Sama, the crazy, like, fanatic girl. Like, if you guys have seen Girls in Pens, or there's, like, one girl who who's like super crazy about tanks. Like she's, she's like a tank addict and knows all the facts and stuff like that. You know, it, this is like, they have that sort of girl in Hinology, but she does that shit times like 50, like times a hundred. And, uh, and I don't really like that. And I wish they'd scale it back down. I know I'm asking a lot from series whose only purpose in existing is to sell these magical girl transformation sequences into <clears throat> DVD Omake plus whatever, I, but you know they could they could try. <laughs> I feel like hers to me was the least offensive one though, just because like I could see what they were going for more. Yeah, I, I, she. It was she, more clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the she, the uh, Josama and stuff. Like it, they go to they do it a lot, but it, it's like really weird and inconsistent. I felt with that. They they I, yeah the the transition is also a slight problem where they're just like they do like. We'll do some of the stuff. They do stick, and then like when they suddenly do like talking scene, everybody just boom, serious mode kind of stuff. Yeah. Song. Um, which again was unfortunate, but but also I, I also saw the girl you were saying the fanatic girl or whatever. Like um, I saw more of like the character from uh, what's it called as well? Uh, a channel. As weird mm -hmm. of a sort of like comparison to make that is. Um, you know what I'm talking about right? No, not a channel. What the fuck am I? Why am I saying a channel? It's not a channel at all. I don't even remember the name of the show now. Well, fuck me. All right, I'm done. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I don't. I don't uh, remember the name of the show anymore. It was the rom com. She's got the fucking buns in her hair. Congratulations. And it's buns the rom com between the blue haired girl as the main girl and the black haired like soft spoken guy. Chitsuo Watashi or something like that. No, that's not. That's. No. No, that's that screener. Uh, that's screener. O Ore Gairu? No. No. Fuck. What was it? <laughs> There's no blue haired girl in that. It's like, uh, she's the blue haired girl, and they always draw her as like a cat girl. Or, well, she's animated like a cat girl sometimes, too. When it's the more like rom romancy scenes. I had no idea. Oh, what you're oh. Uh, Omamori Himari? No. No, 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 oh, okay. uh, oh, no, no, no. Uh, here, what was it called? Here, there? In English? Uh, Achikochi, Achikochi. Achikochi. There you go. Achikochi. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Excellent, yes. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that, ah. Makes, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, the orange-haired girl from Achikochi. Okay. So... They have, like, the same sort of, like, gimmick going on where they're science-y and everything blows Yeah, up that makes them. sense. That makes sense. All right. Um, I think... Uh, also, this series has like one or two newcomers coming in, which I do kind of like. Uh, one is the girl who did um, the sort of blonde hair girl, Nene, Nene in New Game. Uh, all right, and like uh, a or like one of the side characters in like Little Witch Academia, Asahina Maruka is uh, voicing this, along with uh, Yamamoto Hibiku, who did some smaller roles early on uh, in the years before, but. Either way, I'm. The problem is, it's like. I'm okay with the transformation stuff. I'm okay with them just doing whatever. But everything in between is like. Is legitimately like slightly a negative to some extent for me. It's like. It's not like, oh, I'm looking at it and it's like, oh, this is terrible. I'm, I'm not like that. But it's kind of like a drag, where they're kind of harping on their sort of shtick a little bit for me. Um, Dark mentioned it does have some resemblances to like you know very like preset roles like in Achikochi, uh, the science girl. But I'm not sure whether you know taking that for like ten minutes and then seeing five minutes of the transformation scene into you know whatever, it will be good enough for me. So. I'll watch like one more episode and then probably put it on my backlog if it's not good enough. But like, it, 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 it has the package. It knows what it's trying to sell, but the parts of the package that are kind of like filler-ish 
are dragging it down somewhat, is what I'd say of Kinology. Um, Dark? I mean, I said it last time uh, during previews, I think I actually, I don't remember. No, it wasn't about this show, but, uh, you know, I've been out of prison my entire life. Why not change it up a bit? <laughs> Go all the way. You're going wow, to have, baby. Dude, you, you're going to have uh, Tenshin no San P coming up soon. You, don't, you can't even say that. You, you can't ever, ever, that that. You ever have a prison burrito, that. Dark? Or a prison <laughs> pizza? A prison hot dog? <laughs> I watched prison anime, though. Award winning, <laughs> in fact. Award winning. Uh, geez. But with that said, we are going to move on to our final series. And ever of all time, yeah, ever we're this ever is the last episode. Podcast <laughs> over. Yeah. Uh, but this one, I believe, Dark did watch. I I think uh, all of us, except for Toast, watched a little bit of it. What? Um, and it, you don't watch Kakiguru, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I read is... the manga, and I said I'm probably not interested. Oh, you in read this. the manga? Yeah. Okay. 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 So all of us uh, ha- have uh, seen or read a little bit of it, and it is called Kakigurui. Uh, Dark, you want to start us off? Compulsive uh, gambler. <sighs> yeah. Guess what? It's. I mean, when near uh, was give, give us give us a rundown first. Give us a rundown. Okay. So basically, it's this school, and it's uh, got gambling in it. And it's a lot of gambling, and they gamble, yeah. and they do that. And then for, like, the gambling stuff happens. Stuff like yes. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, some girl throws down a card. It zooms in on her lips. It gets a little creepy, and then you know, <laughs> and you feel like you're covered in slime. And show's over, folks. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, Mappa Show, I believe. So the you know the same people who did stuff like Duncan Terror, Yuri on Ice, so on. Uh, I didn't know it was the same people who did Yuri on Ice. <laughs> what if they were what wow. if they had the same types of lips while they were I mean, you could kind of tell with like some yeah. of the CG shit in it but <clears throat> um Mappa used to look really nice um <laughs> but lately not so much um this show kind of it looks nice sometimes but yeah <laughs> yeah it, it does but actually it, but then it tries to do the whole like prison school thing right? yeah, yeah um I was gonna point that out uh because earlier I, I I I compared it to prison school due to you know the school setting and they have secret stuff going on yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. after school but um I feel like they kind of tried to emulate the aesthetic the sort of prep, purpose of, yeah I would I would agree school because you know how when you're watching prison school you look at it and there's like a layer of fucking Vaseline over everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's almost that to this show. It's not and also as severe, sometimes like, yeah, but it's there, right? And also sometimes like purposefully grotesque, like is it like you know hyper realistic yeah. camera angles? Yeah, pretty much. Like when yeah. you when you think of a prison school scene, like it's that sort of look to it where everything starts getting a little too detailed in all the wrong places. Yeah, the the blonde girl has. A, a, a winning hand, so her face turns into that of a monkey for some. Yeah, like a fucking like gargoyle shika. Yeah, but um, it's, yeah, it's it has like the grotesque sort of aesthetics. And when we say like prison school, we don't mean like oh, obviously prison school invented like grotesque faces, but it's the easiest like most recent imagery we're using. So, um, it it, it has that. It has sort of the sort of um, femdom fetish to draw people in, in my opinion. Like you know, like the, those people. I but, mean, one uh, of the first, the one main of the first characters lines. less than human. I was gonna say one and, of the first. No, 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 oh, no, 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 school, a school pet, and this, no, 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 this girl's and, using me as a stool. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Fuck off. <laughs> um, so the fan of the fetish is there to attack people and stuff like that. Um, and it's gonna be running strong, right? And. Uh, <sighs> And then the rest of it's essentially, or the non-sort of uh, fan service part of it, it's essentially Shokugeki no Soma, right? Um, and what I mean by Shokugeki no Soma style is... Uh, mind games? An extension... Yes, mind games in your food. <laughs> um, but essentially an extension of the sports series, or rather a variation of the sports series, where uh, a significant part of the focus during like the matches is upon, you know, accomplishing something and then just like orgasming over it right 
Uh, so it's and like, then at the end, you spend a solid two minutes explaining, oh, you know, I'm a genius, uh, yeah. But it was all luck in the end. Yeah, but it was all, but it was like, all luck and like, all talent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like Dojo. It's like Dojo poses, but with like grotesque faces. <laughs> I can, but I can see the, this first episode being the like this first episode is going to have the same flow of every episode. Yeah, I mean, of course, like, because I mean, it is essentially a sports series, right? Is it it's, like the? Uh, is it? But it's more like the Death Note. Didn't even really have that much like of each gambling. game, though. Well, they, well, I mean, this this is just episode one. The game is going to, like, the game in the first like two to three episodes is going to be small, or the first two episodes is going to be small, or episode two is going to be some sort of like setup exposition. What, what was going the first game again? Like, game. is it the popularity contest? Or... Yeah, it was the rock paper scissors. Yeah, rock paper scissors. Um, yeah. Okay. So my prediction is that they're they all, they did this. Uh, number two, they're going to do a little normal thing to a very small game, and then lead up into more character development. Episode three starts off the first big game, you know, four or five do some bullshit, and then six, seven, eight is going to be continuation, either into character development or into a second game or into training arc or some bullshit. Well, right? I can tell you, there's not very much character development in this series. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just predicting off my you know, experiences with these sorts of series. But um, yeah, I've 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 seen a good chunk of the manga, and there's not very much. There's <laughs> not there's not much going on there. Um, Except just like orgasming over how much. Yeah, luck, uh, it's off. <laughs> it's gambling and faces. And yeah. Do you ever live yeah. on the edge of on the edge of life and death? Yeah. Yeah, and then the gambling uh, creates the rivalries between the girls, and then they gamble yeah, the some more, and then they make the, more. The faces. gambling is the character development here. You just don't get it. Yeah, you, you, you're yeah. gambling for that character development. <laughs> uh, I guess I just lose every time. Yeah, <laughs> but um, what again? What I don't like about these series is that first of all, it's like. And this this brings me to a sort of like shower thought I had, but it's also sort of um, you know, stuff I've heard over the past couple of stuff. And this slightly gets away from Kakigurui, but it's still relevant. Uh, so people are always like, you know, nowadays it's like, oh, it's like a Monica ripoff. It's like I liked Monica, but this is a Monica ripoff, or like this is some other ripoff or whatever. And to be sure, there are series that are bad because they 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 may they're tried to copy a, a, a series that was solid and then they were you know they failed at it either audiovisually or the plot wasn't good enough or they just straight off copied it and didn't really care about making their own stuff or whatever right um but there are also series that are ripoffs to be sure and that is a slight demerit in its own right i mean whatever there's a lot of copying going on in every form of literature but because the original premise, the original structure of what they're trying to copy is not fundamentally sound, it makes for a problematic statement when people are like, oh, well, it's a ripoff and that's why it's bad. I'm just like, no, the reason why it's bad is because the structure itself wasn't solid enough to begin with. Like with, again, Shokugeki no Soma, like, sure, the food trivia is sometimes nice, although half the time the author is saying bullshit, like Kao and Saki, half the time the Mahjong stuff is wrong, right? And then... Uh, how would you know, Spire? Are, are, you a, are you a gourmand or because a, a putting Mahjong a, master? Because I've tasted both fried eel and a, a plum, and sticking a plum in a fried eel isn't good. <laughs> how, how would you know? Uh, that's just uh, your opinion, yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah. Like your opinion, man. <laughs> That's my favorite dish, Spire. <laughs> you ever, you ever uh, tried making African ramen, Spire? <laughs> African With ramen. Peanuts and chili peppers? Yeah. But anyways, the the structure of Shoku Gege no Soma, obviously, this initial sports structure, I've never been a huge fan of, you know, the training arc, the tournament, you know, the matches taking like five episodes just to do anything. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of, and Shokugeki no Soma exacerbated that to a certain extent by having the overreactions, whatever, uh, to stall for time. And then here, Kakigurui takes it here, and I'm sure a lot of people will be making references to Shokugeki no Soma, maybe even to Kaiji if they're stupid enough, um, doing whatever. What about Akagi? Yeah, or Kagi, whatever. Um, they'll, they'll mostly probably say Kaiji because that's the more like referred to series, right? Um, but I just 
don't like the fact that you know people are kind of kind of write it off as a ripoff. No, it's a little bit worse than that because the whole structure of this you know, sports into you know ex essentially the four part step, which is you know they uh, explain the game, they take an entire episode, they take like thirty minutes to do like select moments that you know where they're like, is he gonna choose A or is he gonna do choose B? You know, action, and then three the result, you know, uh, and, you know, people orgasm over it. And uh, step four, which is what Nier said, which is, you know, explaining how the result came about and how the dude was a genius or a total, you know, uh, blessed by blessed by miracles or whatever, right? And this structure is honestly fundamentally flawed just because it's so repetitive. It's so, like, it's so made for episodic stuff. And even if it's not made for episodic stuff, the second step of it which is you know going through the is he going to do a or is he going to do b it's you know it's 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 not that much it's not funny it's or it's not hype it, the first time you do it maybe the second and third times you take you know three episodes to do that sort of stuff it's not gonna be work and that's just no it's it's both a ripoff and it's just bad on its own legs as but like, they make the funny faces yeah that's true um yeah, and uh, one thing, one last thing I want to uh, talk about, or I, like uh, I want yeah. to say, C Cecil before says you guys... it's like yeah. a liar game, but not as interesting. Is that what? Yeah, that is, that is pretty much. <laughs> uh, that is pretty much. And liar games ending so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but... you think Kakigurui's ending will be good? <laughs> <laughs> the rest of liar game was pretty decent. Like, unlike this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but one thing I want to say personally before I uh, let it off to the other guys is that uh, I know that the main character is voiced by Jaime Sauri, right? I'm pretty sure I'm right, right? Like, there's no way. Um, yeah, I, I'm right. Yeah, I just I, checked it. Yeah. yeah. So it's Jaime Sauri, right? <sighs> this situation is slightly different but uh, from Hana, uh, Hanazawa Alcana, but because first of all, she fits the role in one half. But I'm not going to give any quarter on this because I didn't give any mercy to Hana Zalakana when you know she's doing stuff, right? So what I'm gonna say is that Jaime, I mean, sorry, I understand why they picked her for like the crazy part, but like she doesn't fit the role as a normal girl. You know what I mean? Like when she comes in and when she's just like you know, doing normal stuff and she, she's like conf relatively confident, you know. At, as a girl, as a transfer girl, and just doing whatever, but she just sounds like either she is Hayami Sari or she's super nuts Yandere Hayami Sari, right? And there's like, and one thing sort of fits in like the crazy sequences or whatever, kind of sorta, because she's crazy. But the Yandere part, the Yandere crazy kind of like insinuating voice doesn't really fit that much. Yeah, but um, like the rest of it just doesn't fit that well. It's like the Hagen Eye situation where I'm like, this voice is really off. Like, I feel like this girl should just be, you know, more confident, like Kitamura Eri kind of voice, right? Or um, Hikase Yoko kind of voice, or uh, Minami Chiara kind of voice. And I don't know, it's, they're kind of putting in Hayami Saori because she's crazy and also because she's a big name, she's Hayami Saori. But I don't support that kind of shit. I didn't support, you know, I don't support it when Hanazawa Kana gets in, you know, even for a role that she's relatively considered in. Um, and I don't do it for Hayami Sari because I can just hear the Hayami Sari in their voice and then she just goes crazy whenever the gambling appears. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of all I had to say about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, whatever, fucking weeb. <laughs> uh, so, Nier, do you have any last words uh, for this or series? I know, I know, this is only the first episode. We'll, we might go back into it, but you know, any I last mean, words on how the initial package looks? Well, first of all, the episode I watched had the worst fucking subs, fucking congratulations yeah. and congratulations. the the hundred twenty tooth anniversary. Shit was a pun. It was a, pun. It was a joke. Got him. Got him. Like. <laughs> So that 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 first off was a, a bad experience. 
fault. Yeah. I, I can say that much. You should be grateful um, they even stopped it, dude. Yeah, <laughs> I should be grateful. It's not about me, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I just, I know, I know this is going to be a series that's going to have shitloads of threads and people are going to spam the fucking pictures of the wacky faces and be like, wow, this show is so good. <laughs> it's, just it's just like prison school. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to see it. I don't yeah. care. It's, <laughs> you know, people are going to use that for like me, so many memes, like all the time, just like the grotesque faces, like the face when blah, blah, blah. And you're going to be like, God damn it. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Funny face. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. I said it. I said it in the the Discord, but uh, the I've read the manga for this, and the manga's value, like the 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 best you can get out of it, is essentially, damn, this looks nice. Wow, mm. that's a funny looking face. <laughs> wow, that's some <laughs> impressive gambling. Uh the, the, faces, the faces in Kakigurui are actually, or sorry, the manga, from what it looks like, is a little bit softer than the stuff in the anime. They're, the faces in the manga are much better. Yeah. Like, are you, they're like light you, novel stuff. It's like light novel stuff. Because the faces in the manga, they're like, I mean, they're they're very detailed because, you know, that's those are the pages that the, like, the author works on, I guess. Yeah. And um, <laughs> he doesn't make the girls look like fucking apes. Right. <laughs> you want to bet on that, near? Like the bl- the first episode, the blonde girl is like her lips go out like two inches from her fucking face. It's like, what is going on here? Like, uh, they look uh, gross in the anime, are you right? Saying your lips don't extend two inches out from your face. So, <laughs> the 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 manga's value, like, it already has more than the anime because the anime, it looks okay. But I can't really say it looks nice, right? Because, like I said earlier, it's got that weird, like, Vaseline filter that prison school had. And then even the faces, like, they're gross looking, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But. Yeah. This is going to be a series that everyone's going to talk about. And. Just like prison school. I'm going to lament every second of it because this uh, series isn't. That great. Yeah. Okay. But so. near, it's made by Mappa, and Mappa has Studio Madhouse people behind it. How could wow. it go wrong? You know, because Madhouse has been the pinnacle of quality for the past couple Ever. of years, right? <laughs> near. Sorry. <laughs> right? <They> fucking... <laughs> right? I'm right, they right. Made... <laughs> Somebody agree with me. <laughs> Pinnacle of quality. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, dark. Any last words on Kakiguri? It's not very good. I'm not going to watch any more of it. I want to. It makes, it makes me I, feel greasy. I'm going to watch more of it just so when people like say stupid shit about it, I can correct them, honestly. That's like half the reason. The other half is Hayami Saudi. I'm sorry. I have I mean, to give see in. When he got that, see when he got that full house and blackjack? It was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> the royal flush. Oh my god, grotesque oh, face. Oh <laughs> this is like this show is like bad Saki. Saki was good. This show's not. Yeah, well, Saki had power, so it's like automatically so much better. <laughs> this show, like, I feel like tries to be dramatic like that, but then it's like instead of showing powers, they do the grotesque face, and it's like, yeah. wow, that's that's, that's not, very not good as good. Yeah, that's not <laughs> that's as not good. good. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying the spirit of the gambler has a grotesque face? <laughs> Rears its ugly head. And toast. Is, uh, is, that, is, that, is that a metaphorical uh, life lesson? That gambling makes you is ugly and makes you ugly? <laughs> it, shows, it shows your true ugly inner, inner self. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Just like Anyways, season uh, zero, Yukio. <laughs> fucking toast. What? Any last I words on Kakiko? Pot of Greed. <laughs> and make a funny no. face. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, uh, you again. You've read the manga, and I think uh, you guys I mean, are, are you in planning... for a wild ride. I mean, are you are I'll you say. planning on watching the no. anime? I've had enough of the manga. Uh, I mean, I'll watch it for the funny faces. 
Yeah. Okay. So overall, not the best of receptions. Hopefully, uh, people are gonna like. People are definitely gonna like it. Yeah, like I mean, said, people are gonna like, gonna like it, but I mean, people also like sort of online. So <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is our three series that we uh, we mostly watched. Again, next episode is gonna be pretty hectic because everything will be out by then. So we'll be we'll be making the rounds then. But yeah, so watch out for that. And finally, we'll move on to the news. A lot of uh, news this past two weeks, and this isn't counting, you know, the two weeks before the preview show. So, again, this is, it's been hectic this summer, and it's just, you know, it's just July. Uh, there's actually a lot of very interesting uh, manga and anime sort of adaptation slash, like, premiere kind of stuff coming up. So, usually, again, I don't do this because there's so many manga anime you know announcements whatever but i would like to list some of them out at the very end so watch out for that anyways first off on the sort of awards slash art ceremony uh, list we have uh so g kids nsc and variety are planning on uh launching a yearly quote-unquote animation is film festival in los angeles so Animation distribution company G Kids, the Annecy International Animation Film Festival, and entertainment trade magazine Variety announced in Annecy on Friday that they are working together to launch animation as film. The first film festival will run from October 20 to 22nd in the TCL Chinese Sixth Theater in Hollywood. The event will host 20 programs, including feature films, competition, special presentations, retrospectives, and short film programs. The three companies aim to fill Fill a quote unquote fill a gap in the U.S. market by establishing a world class animation festival on par with the major events in Europe and Asia. The festival plans to quote unquote champion and support will, women filmmakers, filmmakers from a wide range of cultural, economic, and national backgrounds, and filmmakers who use animation to pursue unique cinematic visions and who are unconstrained by conventional notions of what animation is capable of. So they're trying to be you know the sort of you. North America anime, you know, animation sort of festival kind of thing, right? Um, trying to pull in sort of the increasing number of, um, I guess, both, you know, Western animators as well as, you know, Asian animators and stuff like that. So uh, the festival hasn't yet announced any of the animated works that we will feature at the inaugural event. So, yeah. Again, G Kids website is. G Kid is the first sort of a, uh, the current distributor for all you know Studio Ghibli films and stuff like that, uh, and you know a lot of other anime films. So they will probably be also looking towards a lot of like anime stuff that have been recently released. Uh, what do you guys think about you know just like sort of a lot of not just like anime, I mean animation festivals like this popping up, but a lot of sort of, you know, anime stuff, Jap Japanese anime stuff getting sort of the spotlight at these festivals these days. Is it just going to be Studio Ghibli and this stuff? Yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be Studio Ghibli, it's going to be like Shinkai Makoto kind of stuff, right? And it's going to be maybe some what other... What like, about the Unlimited Blade Works movie? <laughs> or the Clannad movie? Me? Oh, well, the Clannad movie... <laughs> no. <laughs> What about the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie? No. Yeah, pinnacle <laughs> of animation right there. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, and the other, I guess, if uh, there's uh, no other comments, the other news is that uh, Studio Ghibli's The Red Turtle film wins the Anima Fest Zagreb Award. Um, I believe this also, uh, or the Red Turtle film came out as a competitor in another uh, animation film festival. I forget uh, which one it was, but it did win. It did just win the animated. Uh, sorry, it won the Grand Prix feature film category for the for the animation Zagreb Animation Film Festival in Croatia. So uh, congratulations to them. Uh, Sunal Karabuchi and Mappa's In This Corner of the World was also nominated for the category. The one about the uh, World War World War uh, Two, I believe, like daily life kind of thing going on. So yeah, again, congratulations to them. Next piece of news, 
this one is a little bit weird. Um, so the Saitama, a man in okay, oh, Saitama One Prefecture Punch Man. <laughs> Saitama Prefecture Police arrested 35-year-old uh, Yuya Yasaki, Yasuke Yuya, uh, Monday on charges of obscenity and his dep uh, deposition. The suspect wrote that he was "quote unquote" imitating an adult. Uh, adult doujin manga. <laughs> Police an appeal to the author of the doujin manga to use consideration in drawing works that might be imitating crimes. <laughs> was it One Punch Man? What? Yeah, it was a One Punch Man doujin. Uh, yeah, yeah, Saitama. Yeah, yeah. Pre the police arrested the man in his home in Soka City, Saitama Prefecture, after the mother of a middle school student reported to authorities that a man had been following her daughter and called out to her. Uh, he was apparently a previous uh, uh, offender being arrested before for alleged sexual assault against a minor. Oh, you, you, oh, why would you copy a dojin about that? That's 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 weird. Yeah, I've never seen those before. Yeah. Never it's almost those. like it's almost like he's not mentally sound or something. Yeah. According to prefectural police, the suspect got allegedly posed as an inspector checking for radioactive contamination in order to, <laughs> what? In, in, in order to coerce the victim into letting him into her house. Once inside he allegedly stated that he needed to physically check the victim's body. He then threatened the victim with violence if he she didn't remain quiet. That, uh, that okay, that premise kind of sounds familiar. Really? <laughs> what <no joke. laughs> I I have never heard the whole radioactive contamination detector as a title in Dojo's before. But <laughs> what, was he You're wearing a radio? Are was he wearing a suit? Radioactive, because you're making me hot. <laughs> yeah. Was he wearing like the the radiation suit? Yeah, he should have just been wearing like all lead or whatever, like that lead thing that you use during checkups. That, uh, yeah, <laughs> or, lead or just like, or, or just like a huge like uh fucking like overcoat, like a uh, like Q, like <laughs> or something. Yeah, he's like, got a big metal mask on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this whole thing against check radiation. your body. Yeah, <laughs> does like the Q super on the girl. <laughs> but yeah, uh, don't. Don't, don't follow those. It's, it's it's not a good idea. Police um, claim that the manga contained a similar story of an inspector looking checking for radioactive contamination as a pretext. What? There's no, I was no... right. What? I was right. That's a oh my god! Why radioactive contamination? I mean, I've heard crazier dojin stories, but like, I mean, Le I mean, the dojin is essentially a vanilla rape dojin. But with radioactive contamination check, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, I'd believe like, it if it was gas leak, but yeah, gas leak, radioactive yeah, contamination. That's like, a specific one. Yeah, I, I, there's a gas leak. Hold or on. the e or the easiest thing is like the pizza dude or whatever, right? Or like the mailman or whatever. That's like the, <laughs> the easiest pizza thing. boy. Yeah, the pizza boy. Like, why does it have to be radioactive contamination? But this is neither here nor there. But anyways. Uh, accord this is the best part. According to a source close to the investigation, the police are considering sending similar appeals to creators when crimes imitating their stories occur again. But it's like, you can't really help it, right? It's like, there are plenty of stories that are like super bad, but you're not going to be like, hey, you wrote a story of like a vampire, like, you know, drinking somebody's blood. And then like when somebody like, you know, yeah, goes fucking crazy and tries to like rip off somebody's neck. They're not gonna be like, "Hey, you need to cut down on that vampire stuff." Like, like that's not that's not how it works, right? So I, I don't know. It's it's kind of funky. That like the creator can get really kind of wound up in this. I don't think. Do you do you want to know the name of the right. dojin? Because I got the name it? of the dojin. Really? What is it? You really want me to tell you? Uh, just DM it to me. No, yeah. do you want me to? I'll say, I'll say it if you want me to. Say don't it. say it. I'll just DM it to me, dude. Just whatever. It doesn't. Okay, I don't care. Okay. Anyway. Hold on. Let, let me pull it up next, for you. Next. Uh, yeah. Just pull it up later. Um. Or DM it. It doesn't matter, dude. Okay. Anyways, next piece of news is on the VR front. VR booming as ever. Sort of going more into, I guess, games slash fan service category, as mostly expected, right? So the first piece of news is that Bandai Namco Entertainment announced on Thursday that its planned VR zone, Shinjuku Center, will open in Tokyo on July 14. When the facility opens, it will have 15 activities, including Dragon Ball VR, Master the Kamehameha, Evangelion VR, Throne of Souls, Ghost in the Shell Rise, 
Stealth Hounds, Mario Kart Arcade GP VR. Um, in addition, Bandai Namco Entertainment plans to open a selection of VR activities in 20 locations around the world, with London being the first location this summer. Bandai Namco is considering opening in such locations as Singapore, Dubai, and New York. Please let one open up in like the East Coast or something like that. And please don't let it just be in like New York City. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no there's no Gundam one? That's a big that's a big miss. They might have. They already have the know. Gundam pod, but why not? Uh, oh. Uh, the center offered a Gundam experience beginning on August twenty sixth. Okay, it already has one. The center will use anime and manga characters in its VR experiences and will use VR goggles as well as projectors that will put images on walls and floors. The facility will also offer food and drinks. I think the food and drinks thing is a bad idea unless it's like outside the facility, honestly. Though, <laughs> like this, this stuff, yeah, I don't, I don't want like why kid, like you don't, you don't want to eat during your your VR mission. Yeah, like while I'm massing the Kamehameha, I'm just eating while I'm firing it or whatever. But it's more just that I don't want to see, I don't want to see like a dirty like food infested goggle or whatever. You know, because oh, they were serving shit, you know. That's oh, not going to be pretty. No. And like drinks are just going to be like one drink spill and it's like 200 bucks like down the window. It's like, you know, hard. Hey man, the these screenshots look pretty cool. Look at that cool dude shooting yeah. off Kamehameha's. I'm a Kamehameha. <laughs> I think it's uh, pretty nice that Ben and Uncle is doing this, but it's again, it's one of those things where it's like you need to be in one of those very like urban centers or in Japan to do it. So um, the other one, the slightly more accessible one that's coming out is uh, the official Twitter account for the Monogatari anime series announced on Monday that the Kizu Monogatari VR projection mapping video experience will launch in Japan on July 12th coinciding with the release of the third Kizumonogatari anime film's DVD and Blu-ray disc. How is It'll that more available? accessible, though? People more, know a... more about Dragon Ball than Kizumonogatari. No, no, yeah, I, don't, really. I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean, like, more accessible as in, like, more people know, but I mean, like, accessible as in, like, you don't have to travel to fucking Shinjuku <laughs> in Japan <laughs> to, like, get it. Uh, it'll be available in the PlayStation Store. Um, That's so... Free. Oh. Yeah, so Kayak, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Japan Asia, Sieja, and Aniplex are partnering to develop the project. The project uses VR projection mapping to create a new video experiences. Uh, Aniplex previously streamed a promotional video in which previously experienced featuring the vampire character Kishot Acerol Orion Heart Underblade. So yeah, uh, so they're trying to kind of experiment with VR using you know these new DVDs and stuff like that. So that'll be a little bit interesting. I don't know how interactive they'll get, but they'll probably try to make it somewhat interactive in the near future, uh, you know, so on. So I mean, watch out for that. Uh, at least it's something for VR. Yeah, 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 yeah at least it's something. Congratulations, anyway. VR. You have a product. <laughs> yeah, you have something? No, they have two. They have a uh, summer lesson as well. Oh. All right, anyways. Next, uh, I said I wouldn't get it to I wouldn't get to anime and like manga adaptations a bit until later, but these three I have to actually talk about because they're pretty triggering at least for at least for at least one one or more members in our group. Uh, so these I have to say beforehand. The first trigger in terms of uh, anime slash manga stuff, Berserk manga goes back on hiatus until winter. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> this year's the manga had returned from most recent hiatus in March. <laughs> this year's 13th issue of Haka Sanchez's Young Animal Magazine is revealing on Friday that Kentaro Mirror's Berserk manga is going back on hiatus until quote unquote around winter. <laughs> the Didn't issue on Friday will feature a new chapter. <laughs> Around winter, so that's next year, right? Hey, the yeah. end of winter. Yeah, some winter anime season starts in January, so. Yeah. Didn't that new uh, Idol Master game just come out? Yeah, exactly. By a million lives just came out. <laughs> so, uh, for those Berserk fans out there, um, wait until a million live goes starts uh, declining in sales, then uh, or declining in uh, players, then you might see something. But beyond that, uh, <laughs> so fucking mad. What? <laughs> yeah. Next uh, triggering thing, and this is especially triggering after uh, Saki and Chihaifu stuff of the similar thing came out. Live action Choka's film trailer reveals theme song November opening. So uh, Choka is getting a live action thing. And like, 
Why? I haven't I haven't watched the Chiai for live action. I actually do want to watch it, but Saki live action, as you know, as was commented on by the entirety of the Japanese interwebs, looked like an AV. <laughs> looked like a porn video, uh, to be quite honest. Um, and the acting was what essentially was like a porn video. Was it? Uh, they do some putting in of stuff and putting on of stuff. But anyways, um. The unfortunate thing is everything that live action can't touches with regards to anime or whatever uh, ends up looking like a porn video. So, I, please, please, like, please don't turn Shoka into like an AV. I swear to God, this is like a last fashion of sorts. Oh, like, I'll oh. give you some frozen ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I think the worst part is like. Like, this is, like, the most slice of life you can get in some aspects, right? So it's, like, if you turn... The, like, Saki, sort of, there is more or less an excuse because it's, like, everybody had, like, flashy hairs. So it was, like, all crazy. And it's, like, you know, anime mahjong ball Z kind of stuff like that. But if, like, Hyoka gets fucked, like... Aha! I'm gonna be dead. <laughs> I'm just dead. I get it. So... <laughs> Yeah, well, Isn't it rather that Japanese porn videos are up to quality with their live action series? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, did you, did you ever see that Metal Gear Solid Five parody? That one was pretty uh, quality. I. But yeah, I just please, please don't let this be garbage. Like, I'm okay with it being like mediocre. I'm not okay with it looking like a porn video. And the last uh, piece of triggering news, and this is especially triggering to me as a huge uh, fan of this series, is. Little but uh, or sorry, visual arts. Excuse me, visual Spoiled. arts to crowd. Yeah, visual arts to crowdfund Little Busters spinoff Could Wafters anime. So Could, could Wafter isn't it Could Wafter? Could, could Wafter. Wafter. Yeah, Could Wafter. I guess. Yeah, Could Wafter. Wait, wait, so wait. yeah, so Little Busters again, as some of you might know, is one of the visual arts slash key visual. Uh, visual novels, one of the famous ones, um, you know, along with Air Canon, uh, the infamous Clonod, and right after that, Little Busters. So I've again personally said many times on this podcast that uh, Little Busters is overall a better visual novel than Clonod, and it had a spinoff based around uh, the protagonist and Kud and her friends, and uh, you know. Just like I read Clona, just like I read Little Busters, just like I read Rewrite, I want to get in. I want to, you know, read the the spin off vision novels, even did if you, they're available. Did you finish Tomoyo after? <sighs> Dude, don't remind me of that. I like got halfway through, but I didn't like continue it. Like, or it's not that I didn't want to. I did want to, but it's like first of all, I I read the spoilers way too early in my in, in my in this like timeline of mine, so I was just like, oh shit. And then afterwards, I kind of got distracted like while I was reading it, so I kind of ended up never going back to it for some reason. But I really do want to go back to it. But anyways, the Kud Wafter, the spinoff for Little Busters. Tell me after, by the way, is the spinoff for Clonod, featuring Tomoyo, the silver hair girl. But anyways, Kud Wafter uh, has never been translated. Uh, I believe there was like an attempt once, like a fan attempt once. But um, it has not yet been translated to English. And I think honestly, it would be really good if it was translated because Little Busters was translated. Little Busters is popular, and you know what's the follow to that? Translate Good Wafter. But no, the anime is coming out, and I'm I'm at best lukewarm on JC Staff's adaptation of Little Busters, and doing Good Wafter, crowdfunding Good Wafter at this time is not the best thing for me. Like. <laughs> Just translate the visual novel, <laughs> please. Why do you have to crowdfund the anime? Like, dear lord. It's been, yeah, it's been, apparently it's been like 10 years since, um, uh, fucking the, yeah, it's been 10 years since Little Busters. So it was released in 2007. Um, but I just, dear god, man. <laughs> Like, you can't... And they're trying to do, like, a... I'm not sure whether they're trying to do an anime or whether they're trying to do a movie because they said theatrical release. But, um... 
I just, I don't know. Like, I just think that visual novel adaptations, unless they're adaptations of like very like stereotypical visual novels, and even then, like there are multiple routes, right? It's very very hard to cover. Like we saw it even in stuff like, um, fuck, not uh, what was that fucking? I mean, Koi Choko was one obvious example, but there was uh, Mashiro Iro Symphony. Stuff like Mashiro Iro Symphony, where it's like very stereotypical. Like, you know, multiple routes, uh, fucking flashy hairs, like shuffle, um, whatever. And it was very hard to cover all the routes. Yeah, they only covered common route. They did like two episodes of like. Eh? Yeah? It's... Eh? 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 Really? Uh, but I think it's even worse. I think it's even worse uh, when they do an actually, you know, more in-depth uh, visual novel like Little Busters or Clonod or um, or, or even their spin-offs could after. But yet they're still forcing this shit down our gullets because they want to make that one more monk, uh, one, one more buck. So it's like. Uh, it's really painful. It's uh, just seeing this shit come out and knowing that it'll be truncated, knowing that you know I won't get even the adaptation that I want or you know any any of the roots that I might want because I, I am like a hundred percenter. So it's like it's so frustrating to me. Just just localize the visual, guys. Like I <laughs> I want to cry honestly. <laughs> just localize the visual, novel. but yeah. For those of you who are fans of the JC stuff and adaptation of Little Busters, you'll have this to look forward to. So, are you saying you don't like Little Busters, Fire? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyways, next on the line, this is actually going to be something interesting because there are numbers. So, the Orcon list has uh, compiled, been compiled, uh, Oricon being uh, the sort of Japanese media, popular media list. Uh, it's, it started up its manga and anime stuff mostly around 2008. And ever since then, it's been taking records of like the top selling, you know, anime, manga, light novel, stuff like that. So this is about the top selling animation in Japan on Blu-ray disc slash DVD by series in the first half of 2017. So, number one. Or uh, by the way, this list covers sales survey from December twelfth, twenty sixteen, to June eleventh, twenty seventeen. Number one, coming in at four hundred six thousand sales over its, you know, uh, over its series. Yuri on Ice. <laughs> Was anybody surprised by that? Wow. Did anybody? Did anybody? Hey, hey, Yuri on Ice, man. It's it's yes. a good series. <laughs> Number two, coming out at two thirteen, Love Life Sunshine, which is actually surprising because um, although I guess it's not that surprising, I, uh, I, it's actually kind of surprising because the the reason for it is because um, if you look at like the music sales, like album sales and stuff like that, uh, Adam Master Cinderella Girls is actually uh, uh, outpacing Love Life Sunshine, uh, and and part of a significant part of that is the recent one that was released, the Adam Master Cinderella Girls Theater and Cinderella Girls Theater at Kikijo kind of stuff. So I thought it was. I thought Adam Master Cinderella Girls like Akito stuff or Cinderella Girls stuff would sell a little bit more. But yeah, it's Love Life Sunshine. Uh, number three, actually clocking in also as a surprise, one seventy five thousand is Utano Prince Sama. <laughs> Utano Prince Sama is a very popular series in Japan. Like I don't think people realize this. <laughs> like it's so popular. Like every season, it just gets like forty k BD sales, whatever. It's silly. <laughs> Um, it should still go on. God damn. Yeah, I know. It's like even when like Bakemonogatari was much more like hype or like you know like, season two it was kind of like revving up with all its like content. It still beat it out because yeah. it's it's a number song. Uh, Token Rambo Hanamaru. Yeah, <laughs> Token Rambo coming in after that. It's a lot of these like our mobile games now. Uh, Token Rambo, Granbu Fantasy, uh, One Piece actually trailing behind Granbu Fantasy. <laughs> Dear Lord. <sighs> Um, after that, it's a lot of kind of like, you know, the standard like movie stuff, uh, like Secret Life of Pets, Fighting Dory, stuff like that. 
Koi no Kotachi coming in just after uh, Finding Dory. <laughs> and right afterwards, <laughs> JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is breakable. Uh, take a look at that at number 20, though. <laughs> minions? <laughs> Yo, Minions beat out ReZero? <laughs> Is Minions the new Evangelion? <laughs> Dude, Item S? Item S is in Relic Girls Gekijo beat up Minions. What the fuck is happening? Uh, but yeah, uh, Kizumon Gatari again. Kizumon Gatari being in this strange place, a little bit below both Secret Life Pets, Fighting Dory. Uh, classic, right? <laughs> I see Dark Side of Dimensions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, these are the numbers. The top five or so aren't too surprising. So actually, no, the mobile games coming up a lot were a little bit surprising, but. Uh, Cinderella Girls Gekijo wasn't, I guess, too like it was a little bit more niche than I expected, so it didn't get as many sales. But yeah, these are kind of like what's trending in Japan so far in terms of anime sales. So, damn, Bungo uh, sold a lot. Is that like a new? Th- is that a new thing, or is that just like still the old Bungo? It's just the series in general. Yeah, it's the franchise. Like anything that sold underneath that name. Damn. Yeah. So but yeah, Bungo's Bungo is selling. That's why Bones is keeping with it. Yeah. Uh, next piece of news on on the quick, there is a uh, there is the eleventh annual manga Jiman contest in the UK that is coming up, in which UK artists are encouraged to create their own original strips. Uh, they are this manga Jiman competition is working with the Embassy of Japan. The closing date for entries is November sixth. The theme of this year's competition is dreams. Quote, quote, we are looking for imaginative stories which will stand out from the dream, stand out from the crowd and not rely on the overwork. And, quote, unquote, and it was all a dream finale. Artwork by the most recent Manga to Manga winner, Amy Clark, is shown on the right. Other competition winners are shown here. And just over 14 should create a story told across six to eight pages. The first prize for Manga to Manga is two return tickets to Japan, Second prize is TBC, and the third prize is uh, Rico Digital Camera. Runners up will receive a selection of manga publications and other prizes. The winner's work will be displayed in a special exhibition at the embassy. So, so yeah, so it's, they don't even yeah. get their own anime studio to work on their <laughs> manga. Wow, what a what a rip! This isn't what the Chinese cartoons told me. <laughs> so get yeah. nominated at the next uh, Kiwani Awards, don't worry. Yeah, they all get. Not honorable mention. <laughs> yeah. They get a pat on the back. Yeah, they get a pat on the back and a get secret your participation like, trophy and fucking yeah. leave. One of them is secretly taken away and, and whisked away to the QRD office. Yeah, uh, but yeah, um, this is a really good effort, honestly, by the Embassy of Japan. No. There was a competition a while ago in like the Tokyo government and stuff like that, where they were like, "Oh, we're going to work. Uh, the winner is going to work overseas or with like an overseas director." Like this is also part, kind of part of like reaching out, right? Doing. Uh, Having the Embassy of Japan being like, hey, if you're an international artist, if you're a UK artist, you know, try drawing something and stuff like that. And, you know, making these connections. And I think that's really good. So, again, if you're an aspiring UK artist or if you're in the UK and you're about to see this, kind of, uh, if you're nearby, you know, Embassy of Japan, you know, you might get to see this stuff soon. So, watch out for that. Next piece of news. This is on the idle front, and as we all know, uh, usually idle news are all. <sighs> yes. Okay. So yes. <laughs> Anyways, the first piece of very pleasant news is that the uh, Fukuoka Prefectural Police arrested a man on Sunday for suspicion of violating the anti-stalker law. The man had allegedly been loitering suspiciously near the Fukuoka city residence of an 18-year-old female HKT48 idol group member. HKT48 being one of the spin-offs of the infamous AKB48 uh, idol group slash franchise slash universe slash multiverse. Is that you, Spider? Yes. The, uh, the Empire, to... if you will. Yeah, <laughs> the Empire. Um, he allegedly, blah, 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 stalker, stuff like that. The idol's family claimed to have witnessed Arata take a garbage bag from the residence <laughs> on May 29th, which prompted them to contact the authorities. Holy shit. It's just like, like my Japanese anime. Yeah. Arata had allegedly been participating in HKT handshake events for three years. The idol reported that she has seen Arata at a nearby train station multiple times. Uh, HKT48 is AKB48's Fukuoka-based sister group, founded in 2011 under the same brand concept of quote-unquote idols you can meet. 
Yeah, that brand doesn't. That brand title doesn't sound like a problem at all. You, you know, someone <laughs> tried to steal my garbage. All they find is dog poo. <laughs> oh Jesus! But yeah, the obviously Spocker is majorly fucked up. But uh, that brand title is also kind of suspicious. I don't see. How old is he? Forty-four. <laughs> okay, that is. What if it? What if he was eighteen-year-old guy? Would he would situation still be, a be different? He would. Still, still be a stalker. He would still be breaking the law, and he would still <laughs> yeah. be arrested. Believe it or not. Are you sure? Because that sounds like this one. Just turn, this one manga just turn, I read. Yeah, it just turns into Dojo then. And then he pulls out a Geiger was, counter, and he's like, "I was hey. just, uh, I was just uh, <laughs> recreating I, I what I read in the Dojo. <laughs> There's a lot of radiation in here. <laughs> the radiation is what keeps me young. Uh, anyways, um. The second piece of great idol news is that, uh, <coughs> sorry, a man threw a flare during a handshake event to the Keakizaka 46 idol group on Saturday. While the flare was quickly extinguished and no one was injured, authorities allegedly found that the man had a fruit knife and Chiba Prefectural Police arrested the suspect for violation of the Swords and Firearms Control Law. Uh, uh... The, cul the culprit was 24-year-old unemployed Sapporo resident Ryuhei Abe. Abe Ryuhei was in line for the handshake with Kekizaka 48 members Yuri Nahirate and Memi, Kami Ka Memi Kakizaki. What the fuck is this meme name? Memi Kakizaki went around 7.40 p.m. Memes. Uh, 7.40 p.m. <laughs> he threw the flare. According to authorities, the suspect stated that his step in his deposition that, quote-unquote, he thought he'd go and kill one of the other. Why? Well, the idol, so authorities would not reveal the name of the suspect's him. intended target. Uh, yeah. According to event staff, fans had to go through a metal detector and have their bags inspected before entering the event. Police are investigating how the suspect managed to bring a flare and knife to the event. Yeah, that's another kind of weird thing. Uh, Keiaki Zaka is a sister idol group of Nogizaka 46, which is in turn a spin off quote unquote rival group of the popular AKB 48. The group was established in 2015. This is like some six degree shit. But yeah, don't. Uh, God, yeah, these people are fucking crazy. Honestly, I mean, um, I mean, like did handshake you also events read this are. In a manga? Yeah, I mean, like the handshake events are like okay, right? Like in isolation, they're okay. The problem is when the handshake event synchronizes, starts like integrating with uh, an, an idol culture in Japan that's like super unhealthy, right? It's not that like, like shaking hands with. <laughs> God. Those... Uh, shaking hands with you know a famous person isn't like super like unheard of, right? Like you do it with like presidents and shit all the time. But do you think so... someone Spire, hold on. Do you think someone would throw a flare and bring a pocket knife to Donald Trump's handshake event? Yeah, because the culture is different. No, right? Who would like... ever do that? Yeah. I mean the whole the context aside. Like like if you're like, okay, the president's having a handshake event uh, especially if it's like in like let's say the US or the UK, the culture is completely different compared to like all well, these like weird idol cultures where they're like, I gotta meet up with these idols and kill them. Like yeah, honestly, I mean, how, how is it so culture... different? Some dude tried to kill uh, Tommy at one of those conventions earlier this year. I mean, if the person in specific is like, you know, hated or is so alike, that's like one thing, but the difference in that is that the idol culture is consistently uh, the idol culture slash the idol industry complex you know, whatever is creating consistently these situations uh, where the idols are put up on a pedestal such that they create the sense of oh i need to worship them oh uh, if i don't worship them you know i gotta have them like this sort of thing they create the obsession because the obsession is what gets people to buy the merchandise so it's this sort of like weird balancing act that they're doing between, you know, uh, buy all our shit, but don't try to kill us kind of thing, which is like not healthy, honestly, on its premise, but people are doing it to get money, right? So it's, it's really unfortunate all around, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm more happy I know you'll will probably be coming over this summer because there's probably going to be way more summer events than... Uh, than winter events or whatever, any other season, right? Because people are more free, so watch out for that. Not really. <laughs> and the final piece of news is One Piece 
is teasing 10 bit projects for its 20th anniversary. Not one big project, Ten. not like three big projects, like 10 big projects. Okay. <laughs> this year, yeah. It's one wasn't, the, uh, wasn't the last movie One Piece Gold 10 or something like that? Maybe? Oh no. Um, this year's 31st issue of Shuichi's Weekly Shonen Jump magazine on Monday is teasing that H. No Oda's One Piece franchise is getting 10 big projects for the manga's 20th anniversary. The magazine's 33rd issue on July 15th will feature announcements regarding the 10 projects. Um, so the manga's official 20th anniversary is on July 22nd. And so the 33rd issue of the Shonen Weekly, Weekly Shonen Jump will be the manga's 20th anniversary comm commemoration issue. Uh, the 31st issue also teases that something will happen on July 22nd. But yeah. Um, Are we finally going to get past the Big Mom arc? Uh, so we're going to be seeing a lot of... I mean, like, One Piece has so much money. It has so much money. So it's like... It's never it obviously stop. could. Yeah. It obviously could do 10 projects, but I'm kind of interested. I feel like it's just going to be like... 10, ten like, Elvis? <laughs> it might... 10... Um, New pages yeah, of the manga. Yeah, it might be but the I, side stories that are featured on, like the first on the title page of every One Piece manga, or side yeah. stories of this character after they were defeated by the Straw Hat Pirates. Maybe, maybe they're doing like a, a kind of like rebundled like volume or something like that. They're probably. I mean, they're. Uh, you always have to think about like how they're probably going to try to sell merchandise off of this, right? Most likely. So it's. It's probably going to be something involving merchandise or rehashed manga or something like that. But uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's uh, all the event news we had for this for this episode. Uh, one piece of people news before we kind of just quickly go over anime manga adaptations. Uh, Miyano Mamoru. Uh, some of you might know who he is. <laughs> the guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he he is actually one of the very very few. First of all, very very few uh, actually affluent slash rich um, voice actors in the industry. Voice actors again known just like everybody else in the anime industry for being very very poor, except for the very very top people, right? Um, and he is one of, also one of the very few voice actors, even out of that, to you know go on to a popular mainstream singing role. So, you know, get a lot of money off that. Um, there were, like, estimates of him receiving, like, a million dollars in terms in terms of, like, total contracts, yearly contracts, uh, over the past year. So, you know, like, ridiculous shit. Anyways, uh, Mamoru Miyano has apparently been the first... Okay, so Mamoru Miyano's Mamoru Miyano Live Tour 2016 mixing Blu-ray discs sold... 12,717 copies and ranked number one on Oricon's overall Blu-ray disc chart for the June 20th, sorry, June 12th to 18th week. The release makes Miyano the first male voice actor ever to top the overall weekly Blu-ray disc or DVD charts. Um, so the previous, <laughs> the previous uh, highest placing video release uh, by a male voice actor was Hiroshi Kamiya's stuff, which was ranked number two. So. Yeah. Uh, again, congratulations to Mamoru Miyano, Miyano Mamoru, and uh, yeah, he's he's a little bit popular. He's a little bit he's a little bit up there. But it's actually pretty funny that he's the first male uh, voice actor to be out there because obviously it implies that all the other number one charts that of voice actresses have or voice actor stuff has all been female, right? Like probably like not a music kind of shit, right? So. <laughs> That sort of tells you a little bit about how the idol industry, sorry, the voice acting industry is heading up, shipping up in Japan, or has shipped up in Japan, rather. So again, congratulations to Miyano-san. Oh, and, oh. yeah. and a little bit, again, on you know, some anime adaptations, manga adaptations people might be interested in that's coming up. Tateni uh, Yusha no Nariagari, The Rising of the Shield Hero. The fantasy light novel that's sweeping the interwebs uh, is getting on an anime adaptation, so uh, Tosa and I are pretty excited for that. Uh, Kiss this creator is creating a new manga. Please stop. <laughs> uh, the person behind uh, Tawa no Getsuyobi, the like series of like OVAs or whatever behind a uh, web, oh, sorry, ONAs. Tawa behind, on uh, Monday. Yeah, Tawa on Mondays or something like that. The per the artist behind that is actually. Uh, 
uh, help, pretty much helping to uh, create a new original anime project uh, called Just Because. So that'll be nice. And why is he making it? Why do you think he's making it, friend? He wants mm -hmm. more Tao uh, on not just on Monday. Dude, look at look at look at the thumbnail for that uh, PV trailer. Like that, that'll that should tell you all you need to know about why he wants to make it in the first place. And also, uh, the the last piece of news is the first you know Fate Stay Night Heavens Feel film PV is out. It looks pretty good, but uh. Does yeah, is it ever going to? Does yeah, it, it's apparently it's going to open it? on. <laughs> it's going to open on October fourteenth. Finally, for the people. Yeah. That's a fucking lie, my man. That's a <laughs> <My> lie. Man. <laughs> I didn't even want to say the date. I just want year to like steer. I just want the year for it to steer. But like, oh man, you know, Saber's got a raincoat. Yeah. A raincoat. Um. Uh, if you tell us if you want to play that on the stream a little bit, you can. But region yeah. lock to Japan. I don't have my region locks. Off. <laughs> but yeah, just play it, dude. It's daily motion. Um, it says it's region locked. Really? Okay. It's, uh, daily uh, daily it's not for me. What? But yeah, it's uh, it's coming out soon. TM and Fate people should be excited about it more than Apocrypha. So, don't yeah. tell me what to do. Uh, anyways. If you're a big fan of it, you know, check it out. Here's uh, the trailer for a little bit. What are you guys like reactions to it? Epic. I mean, epic. I mean, when's it coming out in English? In I Igirisu. Yeah. Yeah. Later? When's the dub? I can only watch my anime dubbed. I can only you know emote with. I can only like. I can only know, understand empathize. emotion in one language. Yeah, <laughs> especially if it's fate. <laughs> But yeah, uh, this honestly. I don't remember. Graphics. Hold on, I don't. I don't remember this trailer park scene or, but them fighting on a moving car. Aren't they supposed to be fighting? He's supposed to be fighting assassin at the lake. Wow, what a big spoiler change. Wow. Honestly, all all I'm thinking about. While watching They're gonna this change trailer. so much, dude. Like you had to expect that. All, all what I'm if thinking, Saber dude, is on her, another motorcycle fighting Ryder? <laughs> dude, all I'm thinking right now is that after this movie, everything related to Saber, like doing like costume stuff, like they're going to, like somebody's going to make a raincoat DLC. <laughs> I swear to you, raincoat somebody... Saber Nendroid. Yeah, I, like you think there will be? Like there has to be one. Like the Saber's real worn water resistance. Yeah, <laughs> real raincoat on it. But yeah. <sighs> This Heaven's Feel again, covering uh, Mata Sakura, the purple hair girl you just saw. With Stop Urban. spoiling its fire. Some of us uh, haven't read that far. Uh, oh, some of us haven't read this <laughs> fucking almost 20 year old visual novel. Yes, yeah, no, I mean, that's that's the premise, right? Like, Heaven's Feel, that's literally. How would you know, Spire? Like, you didn't finish the visual novel. novel. Yes, you just skipped straight uh, to Adorexia. It's, it's her route, uh, essentially. Yeah, yeah, it's her yeah that's, that's what they it's sell. It's her route with a little bit of Ilya mixed in because. And yeah. everything goes bad, and Ilya still doesn't get a good ending because she fucking is fated to suffer forever. Bibliotum. But yeah, uh, again, for Fate fans, watch out for that when it comes out in 20, 2050. So, well, if we're lucky. We, yeah. And with that, we are done with the news for today, and we are going to move on to our shout outs and call outs. So, again, shout outs is one thing. We have one shout out and one call out. Shout out is one thing. We want to praise, you know, uh, give 10 out of 10, thumbs up double thumbs up and it can be one you know idea trend person group of people nation bodies of water whatever and i call it as the exact opposite you get to insult rant over rage at whatever gives negative one out of ten something of your preference it can be an item it can be uh, an era of history whatever uh, but it is one call out and one shout out, or one shout out, one call out, whichever order you prefer. This time, we are moving on to dark. All right, so uh, I'm gonna call out uh, Tekken Seven. 
<laughs> for having the worst fucking story mode I think I may have ever played in a fighting game. <laughs> what and are you also no about? arcade. Throw him and over the cliff. Um, that's from like Tekken two though. That's that's old. That's though. from all the Tekken. Yeah, 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 I know. I know. But it's it's just not good. Like none of the bosses are fun to fight. All right, so like this is like a slight spoiler. Like I'm not gonna say what the final boss is of Tekken Seven. Uh huh. Is it the double but gene? The final boss has the ability to just pop super armor on. Like it, the, you'll get the final boss to half health. Then the final boss will pop a thing that has super armor and then heal himself at the same time. And meanwhile, he's constantly regenerating health, but now he's regenerating it even more. So it's like a Zanami. It's <laughs> even worse. Like, he just... It, yeah, like, it good. just doesn't matter. Like, he, you can't do anything to him to beat him, really. You just have to get lucky. Like, it's just R and It's completely RNG-based. And that's, like, only on the regular difficulty. Like, if you go on the hardest difficulty, like, good luck ever beating that ever, because you won't. Um, it sucks. It's <laughs> not fun. Um, it's really bad. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, bad, bad game. Don't, don't do it. Don't ever play that if you don't want to, or don't feel like it, really. Like, if, if you're on the fence of playing Tekken 7 story mode or not, don't, because it's <laughs> not good. Yeah. Um, also, it's, like, narrator is fucking awful and sounds terrible one thing i never uh, got is, like pointless yeah one thing one thing i never got in tekken and uh, it's not funny it's like they all have like they're different languages right like claudia is italian yo yeah they all right? understand it though don't worry yeah about it. but they, everyone's but like they, fucking quadrilingual speak, yeah exactly they speak different <laughs> like there was the funniest part of tekken 7 was just like when the journalist who speaks English is that like hey, oh, it's just like domain or whatever, and he's like talking to them about like the sun or whatever, near the ending, and he's just like he's doing like an entire interview in like English, so it's like speaking English to him, and he's you know, just like responding in Japanese. It's like like it's perfectly natural. Yeah, it's like... he responds in Japanese, and then meanwhile he's like talking to Claudio, and Claudio speaking Italian. Like yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. It's like uh, Mass Effect. They've got that little microchip in their brain that. Uh... <laughs> I just like babblefish kind of shit. Just auto translate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. yeah but, but yeah, Tekken Tekken story mode is a doozy. So. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Okay, um, so what's your shout out? Um, it's a good question. What is my shout out? I think <laughs> my shout out is gonna have to be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Shout out my call out for Final Fantasy XIV's launch not working for like fucking three and a half days. So that was cool. Maybe you should have been playing PSO2. I, I was for a little bit because it didn't I mean, work actually. If you expected it to work in early access, oh, no, I didn't. you were kind of I, uh, I did delusional. Not. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be as bad as it was though. I expected it to be full on or full off. FF14 was down for. Like, it was pretty much unplayable for three days, and it was kind of ridiculous. Did also, it, it's not even so much that it wasn't working. It was also the fact that Square then was like, oh, we were getting DDoSed. And it's like, I don't think DDoSing would have made it so that you couldn't progress in the main scenario. Did you so, get any uh, maintenance that's just rewards? Sh shit servers. No, absolutely not. They no didn't compensation? Reward wow, lame. Nope, no compensation. Because it was early access. Yep, it was early access. So they were like, yep, no compensation for you. It's like, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it was Shadowverse. We would have gotten ten free packs. I mean, they <sighs> technically should have given you three days of time. Um, it was unplayable. And no, your it's account still access. run. Yeah, but your account still ran out. Yes, there. but right. it's early access, and it's a Japanese company. You expect them to give you oh, free no, shit? Oh no, absolutely not. But they should. <laughs> no. Yeah, Fucking yeah. sucks that they didn't. I expected <laughs> everything from that. That's why, like, people. Freaking out about it, we're like, like yo, you sh should have found something else to do. <laughs> like I was like, yeah, I'll play Player Unknowns and I'll play, uh, what's it called, uh, like PSO2 and stuff, and that's what I did. Not bad. Um, well, you have I a guess... month until the episode five comes out. Yep, I still got to get like ten levels in one of my classes. 
Okay, so with that, I guess I'll go second. Um, my shout out is actually to a very surprising, you know, place organization that I usually don't shout out at all, and sometimes I even call out. Um, it is Manga Gamers, and Manga Gamers recently uh, decided to you know translate slash publish and release um, DS Del Senio. So DS Del uh, Diaz Salseño is sort of the... Uh, Kazoon height. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Diaz Salseño is sort of the, I guess, spiritual successor, although it has essentially the same thematic name, of uh, the infamous series by the same studio, Circus, uh, called DC Da Capo. So if anybody knows that visual novel has also got, I believe, animated into like uh, OVAs and animes and stuff like that. But it is very big uh, in Japan. So they translated the Diaz del Seño, which is the more modern one, and they put it on sale. And it's available on Manga Gamers for 36 bucks right now. Honestly, I've always been shitting on Manga Gamers for being like, you know, e even if it like it is a reasonable business decision, being like, you guys are selling Nuki games at like 40 bucks, and you guys are selling legit games at like 80 bucks, like, and you know like 99% of the time, they're going to be selling Yuki, right? And it's just like, yeah, I kind of understand why the price line is like that and why you're making this decision, but I still don't want to play Yuki games. <laughs> like, why not? I'm, you're not going to, you're not, gonna, you're gonna, you don't play games for the story, Spire? <laughs> for that, for that story, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I love that story, yeah. <laughs> you're right, Toast. You should uh, play but, Yuki games for the story. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, but you know, I, I understood. But you know, now that you know, there's other competition on Steam. You know, publishers are, or sorry, studios are directly working with other like localization teams, stuff like that. Mung Games is probably trying to step it up, and I really appreciate you know this sort of effort where they're translating stuff like Dios Falseño, like actual visual novel stuff, instead of just you know whatever pop whatever. B team studio decides to work with them for the new game. So yeah, shout out to them. My call out, my call out is actually uh, to an article that uh, Dark linked a couple of days ago. <laughs> conversation <laughs> and involved trigger of the week. <laughs> yeah, this is trigger of the week too. It involves some like reviews of like the bygone era of spring 2017 anime, uh, which wasn't overall bad. It was like. I mean, overall terrible. It was like overblown. A lot of them. It's like, this clearly represents the Mag blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, no, it's actually like it's really like I don't think it's nearly as complicated as you're making it out to be. Like, be real here, my friend. This is this Japanese anime right now. <laughs> How deep down the rabbit hole are these people right now? But um, one thing that kind of bothered me, like just on kind of a logic point, was his description of Sekai Suru Kado, Kado the right answer. So that was the one where it's like you have the alien coming down right from wherever and he gives the great technology and then the main character who's a tough negotiator has to negotiate the technology or whatever between nations or whatever he does, right? Was this the one that had to do with like the prime minister of Japan and the government? Yeah, and then the cube coming down on Tokyo, right? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he was like, the way the person described it, he was like, you know, at the, I didn't expect how this story would turn out because to actually turn out to be like, because at the beginning, it was all about this, like, you know, political themes and whatever and like, blah, blah, blah. And then it turned into a story about, you know, human greed, whatever, some, some blah, 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 bullshit. I'm just like, the issue with that is that the type of political theme, quote unquote, you're thinking of, is actually not represented in uh, in anime decently. Like there are, there is greed involved in pol uh, political stuff. That is true, um, but there's a lot more than just that in like you know how political intrigues and whatever run out, and a lot more complexity in how sort of the process goes through. Like be after after the values are set, you know how people kind of go through the process whether it's just straight up lies or whether it's sort of like cooperating with an enemy or whatever it is, right? 
And that's where sort of the depth you know, of the political drama, the political intrigue comes in. But what Japan does a lot of time with quote unquote political themes is not actually, you know, delve into that sort of policy making, the sort of, you know, subtle weaving of, you know, I want this, you want that kind of stuff. But it's more just like they have they have these representatives, these leaders of nations. Sometimes it'll be the Pope, whatever, right? And they're like, you know, um, and it'll be tr- two trains of thought. One will be like, you know, I'm this like powerful person. And I want to just get power. So I'll be greedy. And then they'll do whatever greedy people in anime do, right? And then the other one is all like, yeah, um, I'm I'm so I'm so utilitarian. Like you you can't even imagine how utilitarian slash consequentialism I am. I'm going to do everything. Like if 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 a if a trolley comes up and I have to save a hundred people versus a hundred one people, I'll always press the button to kill a hundred people every time like shit like that right and then the person you know is always like oh i always have to do it to save the greatest number of people and then that sort of comes in which is essentially not even politics right at that point it's just representing greed or utilitarianism or whatever but you know the premise is that you're the pope instead of just some average joe making that decision right and that's again not politics at all but people are trying to, you know, be like, wow, because of, uh, in anime, the prime minister sat down with the Pope, and then the Pope sat down with the, the tough negotiator. Now it's some political theme. But later on, when the Pope isn't on the screen, now it's become this tale of greed. Like, no, that, uh, it's still the same tale of greed. Like, the anime people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. It's just that in episode one, the prime minister was there. In episode two, the prime minister wasn't there. And that's always what's really frustrating because I think um, political anime and stuff could go so much higher and so much better and more complex, but they're not doing it because every time somebody, you know, puts the prime minister on the screen and he's just like, you know, I I think I have to press this uh, nuclear, I think I have to go to the nuclear option for the greater good. Everybody just fucking loses their minds and they're like, this complex political theme is unbelievable. Like, like I can't believe they're having a scene where prime ministers trying to find the greater me, like the greater good. Like, fuck off, honestly. Like, <laughs> it's just so frustrating because it's quite clearly c- 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 hit a ceiling where you know the simple idea of greed or you know serving greater good, you know, the trolley problem, is being used as part of this tool to you know advertise the fact that certain anime have this political intrigue or whatever when it's clear not and it's you know it's just becoming more frustrating because anime people are getting anime producers getting better at you know trying to mask that up so yeah stop stop putting that shit on a pedestal stop pretending like it's some sort of complex political theme when people are just you know being greedy but they're the pope um and yeah, fuck off. That was my call out. I have a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what is it? If he chooses a nuclear option, can he break into someone's house by saying that there's a <laughs> Radio- high <laughs> amount of radiation? That's part of the greed, though. That's, that's the greed with him. That makes it more green morals. <laughs> Damn. He, he wants to do it for the greater good, but there's also a part of him that's just like, you know, I really want to be the radioactive examiner. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But yeah, that was my call out. Shout out. Near. Shout out to Collins. Um, call outs to my computer dying. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that was uh, that was very not Tanoshi. <laughs> um, shout outs to uh, 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 I don't know. Final Fantasy fourteen yeah. Storm <laughs> Blued. Um, it's pretty much all I've been playing lately. Been uh, got my summoner to level seventy. Uh, my warrior is level sixty eight. Um, I'm probably gonna be tanking this expansion. Uh, cause summoner, summoner now is very uh. It's very hard to play because, like, 
they took out a lot of uh, just convenience things that Summoner used to be able to do. Mm -hmm. And um, now if like you mess up one of your stacks, your rotation is completely fucked for like a solid two, three minutes. Um, Cause the, the cooldown you use to get stacks back is an, is a minute long cooldown. Um, and you use it, you get your stacks, and then you use the stacks to get uh, Aether Trail stacks. And then when you have three Aether Trail, you get uh, the ability to Dreadworm Trance. You used to be able to get stacks uh, that you need to turn into Aether Trail while you had Aether Trail, but now you can't do that. So if you mess up one stack, instead of getting your three stacks back, when you have when you mess something up, you get maybe one or two because you've got Aether Trail, right? So then you're completely fucked until you know that <laughs> cooldown that you used, that sixty second cooldown that you used to fix your mistake, then has to come off cooldown sixty seconds later. So then you can get back to your rotation. It's really really punishing, and I don't know why they did it like that because. The entire idea of Stormblood was to make classes more accessible, but they've essentially made Summoner the most punishing job in the game. And a lot of players agree. Um, they, they don't have, like, the craziest high damage, uh, and their AoE damage isn't as good as it used to be anymore. Um mm -hmm. They're just they just got completely fucked overall. So uh I think I'm gonna make the transition to warrior and uh be a tank and hit things with my big axe. Yeah. <laughs> I have to wait nine hours for a queue. Yeah. This but this almost sounds like a second call out, to be quite honest though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, Okay, and last but definitely not least, toast. Shout outs call outs, please. Huh? Oh. My 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 shout out is to the female priest class in DFO. They're pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. And you call okay. Out. My call out is to this one guy back in my high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Throw that yeah. Thursday. Fuck that yeah. guy. Are you having? Are you having flashbacks? In this, this one guy back in my high school was. We're story... definitely not using this plot device. We can't flashback. I, I disapprove of the use of flashbacks as a plot device. <laughs> Go on. The story is, I, I asked this chick to this prom, all right? It was one of my friends, you know, no no romantic inclination whatsoever. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. So I asked her, she said yes. You know, all was yeah. good. And then, like, a couple days later, she called me and said, hey, I... I changed my mind. I can't go to prom with you because this other dude asked me to go to prom and I want to go oh, with him. Yo, what? And I was like, that's fine. No big deal. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And so I, I asked my, my backup plan, which was another one of my friends. You had a backup plan? <laughs> Why did you have a backup plan? Wow, fucking stud. Because uh, I had no romantic intentions toward these group of girls, so it's like I no mean, the romantic intentions aside, it's not like you know, if you're, if you're like, hey, we're gonna arrange. This, I, ha know. I had five, I had four backup plans. Okay, so it oh, wasn't that shit. big of a this deal. This is already a, a yeah. true Yu-Gi-Oh player. A true Yu-Gi-Oh player. <laughs> so, <laughs> Pot of greed allows me to draw another contact. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked this chick. She said, she, she said, sir, sure. And then we all ended up going in the same group. Me, me and this guy and my first my first contact, my second contact and some other Okay, yeah. Some other things. You know, we had a fun that time. Shouldn't... Yeah, okay. No, no big deal. Okay. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, it turns out that this dude and the chick I first asked started dating after prom and I'm like Okay, that's cool. Good for them. Okay, yeah, okay. Fast forward a couple of years later I I learned that the uh this same dude and the second girl that I asked to prom and, and went with, now they're dating. And it's like... Wait, so he broke up with the first girl, and then he ma made out with the second girl? Is yeah, and they like started that? dating. Okay. And I'm like, the heck is this? Well, I mean, that's That feels, problem, that feels right? oddly suspicious. 
from that guy because later on I heard that they also broke up. And now he's going out with like the third girl or whatever on my backup list. Wait, 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 wait. So he's making sure you have no route of escape. He's yeah, gonna come he, for you next. Yeah, he, he's not gonna come for you next, which is the better plan, by the way. Or secondly, he's he's trying to do like pre NTR kind of shit going on. <laughs> like, I mean, I already that's... I already put that in there, friend. <laughs> I already put that. Just letting you know. But um, uh, yeah, the like... problem had nothing to do with this, right? Like the problem, no, like. No. The, the part okay. of this problem this story is like completely irrelevant, except like you you listing your context, you know, like the fact that yeah. you have context. Right? Yeah, 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 okay. I was just like, does the problem have anything to do with this, or like what's going on? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, I mean, so, yeah, I, it's like, like it's been a couple years since prom, and yeah. I just realized that tip like this morning. I was like, wait a minute, this dude, he's doing something suspicious. <laughs> like as Ceci on set, he's sharking in apparently. Damn, oh you, should, you should confront him and pose at him. Yeah, you, so, you, make, you, you need to make sure you know whose contacts list is who, man. <laughs> oh yeah, my then, shout out is, is to that dude, Chris. Oh wait, no, I shouldn't have said his name. Never mind. Good job. I <laughs> thought it was a call out. Yeah, I thought yeah was... call out. It's call out to that guy named Chris, apparently. All right, good Davis. flashback. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad we had. Is that why? Show. Is that why I have some animosity towards Chris Davis? Because he has the name Chris. Yes. Damn. I also have the name Chris, by the way. Well, there you go. Twist. You're just I'm naturally like... a hateable person, Spire. So it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was that was just as informative, just as informative as a real anime flashback. <laughs> It's just like randomly pulls up at a suddenly important plot point. <laughs> Toast now has backstory. His death yeah. flag has been raised. Yeah, he finally gets. No, he, this this is how, this is the flashback before the final boss comes in. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, gonna get. Uh, he's gonna get a power up. Yeah, but yeah, good good shit, Toast. <laughs> good shit. I'm glad you told us about this. Is that? Is, I wonder if that's a suppressed memory because I never thought of it until suppressed like just memory? now. <laughs> what? Man, yeah, you, you know, like that time I went to prom, prom, that was really fucking traumatic. I had to erase that from my memory. I mean, I, like, I I didn't even think, I haven't thought of my prom for several years, and, like, when I wake up this morning, I'm like, what the heck is Chris doing? Oh, <laughs> jeez. Uh, Anyways, thank you for telling us I think about they, uh, I think they have a word for those toasts, and it's just called a memory. Yes. Well, well they, isn't anyway. it a suppressed memory if you don't remember it until now and it elicits strong feelings? No. No. <laughs> no. It is a memory that you that you remembered. <laughs> this is officially the suppressed memory podcast. <laughs> oh Jesus. Anyways, uh, thank you for telling us about your uh, about your friend. And with that, we are done with the shout out to Collins. I mean, yeah, thank you. What I what? Yeah, I'd, I'd still call him a friend. Oh, sure, why not? Acquaintance. I'll be okay. I'll, I'll fix that. Acquaintance. Is he um, on your contacts list? Yeah, he is. Oh, well, there you go. Well, again, we'll just say he's an acquaintance for now. Anyways, thank you to the listeners out here on the stream and the listeners out there listening to the podcast when this is all uh, edited and published. And as usual, you can if you like what we do, we stream our recording every. About the week on Saturdays, 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, uh, where we talk about the latest and greatest in anime, manga, you know, visual novels, light novels, web novels, all the Japanese mangoes, media, whatever. If you again, if you want to keep on constant updates on social media, follow us on uh, Twitter at 4 pp Animecast. Follow us on our Twitch, twitchtv slash 4 Animecast. Again, both start with the number four. As well as on our Facebook page, we also have our own website, fourplayeranimecast.moe, where we put up our buzz, we put up con- other, you know, sidecast content, whatever, uh, you know, stuff like visual novel playthroughs, you know, interviews, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you can check us out there. And so, yeah, next episode will, you know, be pretty busy, but we'll keep rolling. And as always, see you next time. Okay. <laughs>